Good morning, pregame crew. It is Friday, September 2nd, 2022, 8.21 a.m. Mount, excuse me, Eastern Time, 6.21 a.m. Mountain Time. Good morning. How are you? Thanks, Night Truck. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Greg, Casey, Matthew, Whitney, Ram. Mark, I start early every time. Every time. Hey, Eli. Hey, Topher. Good morning. Welcome to the pregame show. I'll get started officially in nine minutes, and that's where I'll go over indices, commodities, crypto, and movers and shakers of the day. We have non-farm payrolls in eight minutes. And I've worked pretty hard this morning getting all of our setups and our roadmap for the day just to get smashed by non-farm payrolls. It typically happens like that, but that's okay. Regardless, we will have a roadmap, we will have levels, and we can trade accordingly. This is the Friday before a long holiday weekend. We don't have trading Monday. Wah, wah, I'm very sad about it, but we don't have trading Monday. So typically the day before a holiday weekend, we kind of slow down in volume. This may be an exception because of the non-farm payroll reaction. So let's get to the ES levels real quick. Thanks for the audio visual check. I want to say hello to everyone. I want to do your chart request, but this is a little different morning because of the data coming out. So 397475, that, that's your key resistance from overnight. Let's just call it 3975. And then above that, your next resistance isn't until 4017401825. Your key support 395525. You see how we're teetering on this hourly 50 MA? So we want that trend change above 397475. We want a convincing trend change on the hourly. Then we can feel more confident that our daily higher low is, well, excuse me, I wouldn't even say that. We can feel confident the four hour higher low is set. And I feel uncomfortable calling this a bull flag because we're not above EMAs. This has been a wonderful bounce yesterday. The bulls really piled on on all of those different confluence of the, all the things we discussed yesterday. And how about that dark pool level? Was it beautiful or what? So I wanna show you this daily uptrend line if you didn't watch the market. A recap video from yesterday. We had this uptrend line and we hit it and wicked off of it. It was just beautiful. We had Apple. These are things we discussed yesterday, not the trend line. We didn't discuss that. Apple on the 50 MA. Amazon on the daily 50 MA. Tesla daily 50 ma we had spy at that dark pool level and the measured move of this potent of the head and shoulders that was confirmed this week man it's been a long week hasn't it this this has been a a pretty long week for me so overall we had those confluence of signals and it was just beautiful hey derek mark basque ar hunter let me go back up to the top. So Matthew, I'm going to look at CCJ. It's my queen of the, one of my queen of the mountain trades today. So I'll look at that for sure. So let's look at UEC now. UEC has plenty of room for a daily higher low, not guaranteed, but has enough room. And it has enough room for hourly higher low compared to 409. Nice healthy bounce in after hours. I would wait for a pullback buy on UEC. Okay, I'm just reading real quick, going through the levels. And this is why I cannot look at chat and do the, the pregame show efficiently. I slow down. Okay, Gurn, sure. I've looked at this a few times for you, I believe. Okay, we're there. Knock, knock. Who's there? 269, 267, double top. We have this beautiful EQ wonderful eq we broke bull out of it and we're struggling to get over this 267 convincingly a two penny break two cent break does not a bull break make so i would use 313 as my next resistance well three dollar psych and then 313 a prior support if we were to get over yesterday's high it looks nice it looks really nice we're extended on the weekly daily we have bearish divergence meaning we're making RSI lower lows when price is making higher highs, excuse me, lower highs when price is making higher highs. Y'all just gonna have to give me a minute for coffee to catch up with my brain. 
I would be careful up here. This is, this is a perfect example of scaling out. I love this move. I think you made a great decision by tackling Gurn onto the long side, but I would be very protective of profits up here. When you get extended, you have to ask yourself how much meat is left on the bone here. Of course, we can't know for sure until it plays out, but right now with four hour approaching overbought, hourly bearish divergence as well on the RSI. So I would just be protective of profits up here. Good morning, Bobo. Hey, Daniel, Sam, Joe, Andre, Graham. So let's get back to ES. I have time for one more chart request. One, one, one. This is one chart that keeps haunting me, PDD. So the Hang Seng was down overnight 0.74% and the DAX is up 1.4%. So we really can't grab any clues, in my opinion, from those two conflicting signals. However, because the Hang Seng was down, that could weigh on the China names today and PDD. This daily chart, we have this triple top up here. We have an inside bar and that's a bearish sign for me. When I pulled up my normal scan of daily inside bars for larger market cap names, PDD was on the list. We only had five names on that list. That's very odd. We had a very strong day yesterday. A lot of names just really shot up after we found that low from that dark pool level. But PDD was an inside day. That shows me a little bit of relative underperformance despite this name consolidating in time and not price here. I still think a top fish of 72.19 makes sense if we get up there, especially because the Hang Seng was down overnight. Oh, good, Matthew. I'm glad you liked it. Bobby, I posted in the video itself, I did a, a snippet link. So here you go. This is how you use Slack, SMH puts. Right here. 11 a.m. yesterday. SMH is seeing big puts being closed out this morning at bid or below bid means it's the selling of puts. It's helping SMH get a bounce going. It's millions of dollars. And if you look in the thread, I posted the puts. Look at all of them. And you see the B. The B means it was below bid or at bid, meaning that it was selling. Use that search bar in Slack. It's your best friend. And also, MU had positive news, which I did not know at the time, but uh, they're building a $15 billion plant in Idaho. So that came out at the same time. So MU started bouncing before SMH and before NVIDIA yesterday. Hey, Mohammed in Pakistan, how are you? Thinking of you and your fellow countrymen with the floods. Hope you are okay and safe. Here we go, let's go to ES, non-farm payrolls, in 13 seconds. Let's see what the reaction is. And again, if you're interested in fundamentals, absolutely go figure out what that number is and try to figure out what that means. It's too many variables for me, I'm a technical trader. Okay, that's a bullish reaction. Let's see how it does at 4,000 psychological. 4,000 psychological should be resistance. That's a big pullback. Whoa. Very volatile reaction. Your next resistance is 4,000 psychological, then 4017. 4017. And if someone can grab the numbers and put it in chat, I would greatly appreciate it. If you're interested in my chart setup, you can click on the link below in the video description to receive a PDF explanation as to what all these colors are. And also on our YouTube channel, Joey made a video, how to set up your chart like Dan or Lori. So you can search for that video as well. Thanks, Casey. I appreciate it. Muhammad, I'm wonderful. I'm in here in this room with y'all doing my passion in life technical analysis. So I'm doing great. Okay, looks like it could be a sustained bull move. We still have to give it time to shake itself out. We're five minute RSI up at 82. 
All right, so it looks like a bullish reaction for now. We'll monitor it throughout the show, but let's get started with the show. Good morning. This is who I am, Chark Al Lori. If you want to give me a follow on Twitter, at Chark Al Lori, I would appreciate it. You can check us out at chartguys.com. What we do is we teach technical analysis, and what I do here every morning, besides cut up with y'all, I try to stay as serious as possible and use your time efficiently. Time is a precious asset. I go through indices, commodities, crypto, movers and shakers of the day. So obviously we have this non-farm payroll reaction and it is bullish. And let me just make a general statement. This is a general statement. The Friday before holiday weekends are typically neutral to bullish. So we have the experienced traders. They're in the Hamptons. And I'm again, I'm generalizing. They're in the Hamptons. And they leave the newer traders on the floor. And I'm saying that in quotation marks because really they're not a left, lot left on the floor. And they typically are more comfortable trading bullishly. I learned this from a guy who was on the floor and has been trading for 35 years. And he's always told me, hey, when it's the long weekend, look for those potential neutral to bullish moves. We've had one Thanksgiving Friday where it was super bearish. I think Thanksgiving before last, and that was a shocker. But typically, if you go back and look at hol- the Friday before holidays are the day before a holiday, you're going to find it's neutral to bullish. So can we act on that information? No, that's not a technical signal. It's just something to keep in mind. All right. So we went over the ES levels. That horse is dead. And SPY, 389.95. Who's going to get a tattoo with 389.95? I'll get one with you. Let's get a tattoo with that level. So we need to watch the daily 50 MA overhead, $400.77. Daily 50 MA could act as resistance on first test. And here's what I'm watching on ES. Hourly overbought. So we're going from four hour oversold straight up to approaching hourly overbought. We're at 65 right now. Hourly overbought could be a reverse back burner setup for a potential top fish. Do we go blindly? Do we go blindly top fish that level? No. We wait for a five minute trend change to the downside or a more aggressive bear, a two minute trend change to the downside and we watch for elevated bear volume. If someone comes, if you see an intruder in your house or someone in your house that you can't even see their face, do you just shoot blindly? No, we need confirmation. Oh, that's a family member in my bedroom. I thought you were a murderer. You don't just shoot blindly. We need confirmation. Confirmation is through trend change on lower term, uh, lower time frames and volume. So hourly reverse back burner is my number one setup for the day. And I'm, as always, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I had to dig for setups today. There is just a lot of blah, meaning we had a great bounce yesterday, looking for hourly higher low on a pullback, not looking for a bear break because the bounce was so high. And it's just like, ugh. Like what? What are we gonna? What am I gonna do with these setups? I had to dig. So that tells me sitting on your hands may be the best bet for the majority of the day, unless a trade setup hits you right between the eyes. All right, Nasdaq. All right, Nasdaq. We have resistance up at one two five one three one two five one three, and the low of this reaction. Let me get. I always do that. The wrong one. Price label. So the low of the reaction on any chart is going to be a key level. We must hold that the rest of the day. If not, that is a bearish telltale sign that bears are stepping in with power. We need to hold the low of this reaction on any pullback. In South Africa, you always shoot first. Oh, that's funny. I'm serious though. It will change your trading. Wait for confirmation. How many times in an oversold bounce do you jump in early and then it keeps going lower wait for confirmation and confirmation can be just that little two minute trend change and you gotta have the volume and then boom you have your confirmation okay rty is at the hourly 50 ma rty was one of the few of the fab four indices that was below it it's testing it now you have support at 1820 1817 and your next resistance It's up at 1867. You have minor levels here, 1854. I try to be clear with my technical analysis. I know my accent isn't always clear, but I try to be clear. So this is a a resistance level. This is a pivot level. This 1867, that's a pivot level where price pivoted, where bears stepped in and turned price. Here, 
bears didn't turn price. It's not a pivot, but it's still a resistance level. But the pivot levels are stronger resistance because bears were able to pivot. And I use that word a lot. I played basketball my whole life. So, and if you're pivoting in basketball, you actually change directions. And so when you change directions, those levels are stronger than just a, a pop up with an upper wick. All right. I'm a little feisty this morning. 32,000 will be a strong psychological resistance for the Dow. I know in TCG, we don't trade the Dow a lot, or I don't see people comment on it a lot. It's just not a fast mover. And as day traders, we're searching for movement. We need movement to make money. Unless you're a premium seller, then you don't want the movement. So 32,000 is a strong psychological level. I would watch that. And this is how I would watch it. Tell me when it gets to 31999. And if I get that alert and ES is at hourly overbought or approaching hourly overbought, then I know, hey, caution, caution, watch your longs, possibly scale out some profit. All right, VIX, and there's our bear break. VIX is a tough instrument to chart. I see lots and lots of posts about you're not supposed to do technical analysis on the VIX chart. It helps me. As long as it's working for me, I'm going to keep doing it. And I think I've given you some good signals from the VIX chart. So with that being said, we have a four hour bear break out of that EQ. So we've been looking for this weekly lower high. And we don't know where it's going to be set, but I would say it's most likely set now. We've been looking for this weekly lower high, and that was a great signal yesterday as well. We had that four hour EQ, we were approaching resistance, and now that weekly lower high is most likely set. We've lost the four hour uptrend. The same thing that holds for VIX is that holds for ES. Look, we're hourly oversold on VIX. I would say that means less, that absolutely means less we are, and we've had a daily pop. Yeah, we're in a daily uptrend. So hourly oversold is typically a good place to scout a daily higher low, but on VIX, I wouldn't apply that concept. U.S. 10-year is chilling out, thank goodness. It caused a big headache for bulls yesterday until they were able to get it to start going sideways. And now that it's pulling back, that's good for equities. Oh, let me go look at the dollar. The dollar's pulling back. That's great for equities and great for metals. I noticed Barrett Gold, uh, the miner was in the high volume pre-market scan. That's very unusual. So the gold bulls have been waiting for this dollar pullback. All right, we did our indices. Told you about that. Let me go to my notes. Okay, now we're at Bitcoin. Bitcoin daily lower high, most likely set. Enough room for a four hour higher low. Okay, we got the four hour higher low and the four hour higher high now. So that's confirmed. I actually wrote, let me... I guess the bulls read my notes. Kidding. Bitcoin daily lower high, most likely set. Enough room for a four hour higher low. And it's a do or die moment for the bulls. And it looks like they got the memo and they're doing, they're getting their groove on. Your next resistance 20426, 20489. But let's be clear Bitcoin bulls haven't done a whole lot till they get over that level. That is the level. Prove it. Prove it, prove it, prove it. Otherwise, this it probably is nicer on the two-day. It's a potential two-day bear flag. Yeah, much clearer. Well, that's nice. You have inside bars on that two-day. But that's a textbook bear flag. I would print that for mom's fridge. If I need to show her what a bear flag is, I'd print this one. Textbook. So potential two-day bear flag. So bulls are super pleased with this four-hour higher high, but go get over that 20582 with bull volume confirmation. We want to see that in order to feel better about this move. Ethereum. Ethereum, nice move. Ethereum has had relative strength compared to Bitcoin. It continues to prove it. Now, I would say definitely the bulls have made enough room for a higher low. It's not a guarantee, but they've made enough room on the daily for a higher low compared to 1420. Here's what I don't like. Ignoring this candle. Ignore that because we're, we're still intraday. But look at that declining bull volume on this push up. We want to see elevated volume on that push up. But otherwise, Ethereum bulls have been looking good and they've been in prove it mode for a while. Key support 1512. 
sit down dollar. Sit down. Dollar join. Yep, it's getting a little pop, but a lower high is still expected on the five minute on any bounce. So ES just needed a breather. That was a pretty large move. Look at, we hit over the 80s on the five minute RSI. So this could still be a little bull flag. So let's just let things shake out. We've only had the, the news for 11 minutes. All right, gold. Gold bulls are doing a little happy dance on that dollar pull down. So we have five minute inside bars, but let's just kind of scan out hourly good job yay congratulations i'm not one of those i call them american idol moms where you tell your kids oh you sing so well and they sing terribly i always tell my kids you're terrible singers like if they're not good at something i was honest with them so i'm going to be honest gold bulls nice try but this chart still looks terrible you've got a lot of work to do they made enough room for a four hour higher low compared to 1699 running into those four hour emas they do have elevated volume on this push up but look at that compared to that bubkus they got to do a lot more so hungry gold bears can look for overbought conditions that hourly approaches overbought that could be a good signal but we need confirmation of that downtrend on a lower time frame with elevated bear volume to enter that top fish idea. You need me to go back to ES, Scott? Four hour is giving me the most clarity. We got a four hour higher low. We got a four hour higher high. 4018 is our next resistance. And we're looking, cause this could still be a daily bear flag. So we can't get too excited, woohoo. But hourly overbought is what I'm watching for, Scott. That's Four hour has the most clarity as far as pattern and where we are in trend, but the hourly has the clear signal for a top fish setup on hourly, first hourly overbought in a daily downtrend. That's probably going to be the most important sentence I say today. All right, let's go back to oil. Leverage beverage, you only just joined. I don't know. And respectfully, I don't care about the job data. Good, bad, and different. Sometimes bad news is good news, and good news is good news. So, and really, really bad news is really, really bad. So unless we're all going back to college to get our econ degrees, it doesn't, it's too many variables for us to factor in and what has been priced in and what has not been priced in. So I wash my hands of it and just focus on technical analysis, which is in my wheelhouse. I stay in my lane. It keeps my brain pretty clear. All right, oil is bouncing. We had this weekly support level and I posted my setup yesterday. If you've been watching here. So yesterday at 12 p.m. right before pit close, I was watching that 8573 support on the continuous contract. And I posted my, if you go to that entry, just I wanna make sure you see that I'm po I post stuff real time. That I posted 18 hours ago, I was in an oil long. I exited half when oil was struggling. And then this morning, I exited the final 86.32 to 88.73. So that's what we do. <laughs> Daniel, this gun to head thing is going to haunt me, huh? <laughs> Excuse me. So at TCG, we like to post real time and give you a fish here and there and say, here's the setup, use proper risk management. But for the most part, our goal is to teach you how to fish. Go find your own fishing holes and bring your own fishing poles. And that's what we teach is the fishing pole. Various systems to, that you can use utilizing price action and trend and, and things that are in downtrend or uptrend to identify places to go fishing. All right, oil still looks like a weekly bear flag. Woohoo! you bounced. Bulls. Bears are going to be looking for a top fish on this. Hourly overbought could be a good signal. Did we just top? Yeah, we just double topped at 89.66, 89.63. This bounce, nothing burger compared to the bear ball. We want to see volume like this and see even that volume was met with bears. So just caution on this oil bounce. I don't trust them as far as I can throw them. All right. Uh, let me go back to oil, make sure I explained what I was doing. 
I was bottom fishing this 8573 and pit close is typically a good time which is at 2:30 eastern to look for potential reversals especially in extreme moves to the downside or upside that's just a, a tip and trick i call it the pit close trade i've been doing it for years and i love it it doesn't work every day you have to have extreme moves to downside or upside approaching support and or resistance in order to look for those reversals all right nat gas all right nat gas I still don't have a good read on that gas. So 12 hour is what I was going by earlier this, was this the 28th? Yeah, earlier this week, we had this 12 hour potential head and shoulders. Okay, then that has me bearish. Then we hit this double bottom. And then we got a lower low without follow through. I don't have a good read. So I love Nat gas. I typically like to just vibe with it but i'm not vibing with it so you can have it i'm not going to trade it look at this four hour uptrend run into the 50 ma and then back in another lower low i don't trust it i don't like the bulls here or under 50 rsi i don't like it on the four hour but i don't have a trade set up for you if you're trading this successfully kudos but no trade set up for me here apple Apple bounced off that daily 50 MA yesterday. We got, we wicked out there. We got a lower wick of bulls buying the dip there. And I think I showed you, I know I showed you this yesterday. That we're looking for that weekly higher low. And yesterday morning I said, let's let Apple flush down and open and look for a bottom fish buy, aiming for that weekly higher low and four hour oversold conditions at the daily 50 MA. <laughs> I was thinking yesterday, if we were going to trial yesterday with to convict a murderer, i.e. find the spy bottom, we had nine pieces of evidence. We would have sent them to life in prison. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you weren't around last week, I've talked about evidence-based trading. And we want to get all the evidence we can. The more evidence we can that, okay, this could be a potential location for a spy bottom, the more evidence that we have, it's a higher conviction trade. And we're constantly looking for data. You would, If you're a prosecutor and you could pick and choose your cases, you wouldn't take a potential murderer to court if you had no body, no motive, no weapon. You wouldn't. Well, that's the same thing in trading. We are looking for evidence. And this Apple weekly higher low, four-hour oversold conditions at the daily 50 MA, Evidence, 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 evidence. We would have convicted that sucker yesterday. Boom, boom. Support, 15755. <coughs> it looks like we're getting over the hourly. <laughs> Sorry, I need some water. Tammy. Girl, we would kiki. We got to figure out a way to meet up. Okay. 157.55 is support. We're struggling at the hourly 50 MA. Yes, it's green right now but I would just be careful. What are the odds that we could take out 160.76? The market would have, see the market's already pulling back. I, I, again, be careful out there today. I don't trust this bull move right now on the Friday before a long holiday. I'm expecting gun to head, Daniel, gun to head. I'm expecting sideways action today, but we'll see. If not, I'll trade accordingly, no big deal. Support 12720, I'm not going to use this broker wick. 12720 is your support. Let me go to my notes on Amazon. Gap didn't quite fill. I don't trust these bulls because of this. Right here. 12284. We hit 12366. I don't like it. We're at the daily 50 MA. Woohoo. We wicked out. Woohoo. We did not fill that gap. I don't trust these bulls with that gap below me. So careful, careful out there. We're at the four hour EMAs overhead. We're getting over that 128.50. A little convincing, but. So I'm, I'm trying to put in, into words in my head what we were looking for. For the most part, most of our charts look like this, where we have we have this huge bounce. What I was looking for today is hourly higher low bottom fish setups. That is the highest conviction trade I have is bottom fishing hourly higher lows, not entering up here. 
I can't tell you to enter up here in good conscience. And the other high conviction trade today for me is on ES hourly overbought looking for a top fish setup reverse back burner. Otherwise, I think that we're in no man's land on these trades. Look how far NVDA is from the hourly 50 MA. Did it have a beautiful bounce yesterday? Absolutely. But they don't necessarily have enough room for hourly high or low. I don't trust it. We can't get over these EMAs. We still have that bear news overhang. So NVIDIA on a bounce would be a great top fish candidate for me because of this weakness. And look, look how much damage these bears did yesterday. We hit 132.70. We broke that 140.55. We broke that 134.59. Now I am noting we're entering this weekly basing area where we based for from August, May, for nine months. We based in this area for nine months. Typically when you enter an area where you based for so long and you got this base breakout here, beautiful base breakout, when you re-enter that zone, that's typically a good area to look to go buy it. But I would just be careful. It's kind of like earnings three-day rule. I would give it just three days to shake out and see if we can find a bottom in NVIDIA. But right now, I would be careful with it and I would just be looking to short pops. Only if the market's pulling down, that is. Tesla. Tesla. Hammer time at the daily 50 MA. Above, is it above the hourly 50 MA? Yeah, it's above. Tesla's stronger. Someone asked me about this in our room when I did the market recap notes yesterday. They said, can we have Tesla as a potential queen of the mountain trade? I, I think that Tesla's looking good. Look, we're over this, well, we're back below this 28125. That will be a key resistance at open, but we're over the hourly 50 MA. And I, Tesla's def, definitely stands out in pre-market with relative strength. I like Tesla long, NVIDIA short. Of our four regulars, NVIDIA short makes more sense to me and Tesla long makes more sense to me. And the other two, I think are in danger zones as far as getting chopped up. Lululemon. So Lululemon, you're welcome. I helped this earnings beat. We had a huge move after earnings. Gap ups are typically for selling. This is an outsized earnings move. It could gap and go. What I would wait for is a stair step move to the downside for a potential bottom fish buy. It can make it all the way to 308 and still be a potential bull flag on the four hour. So I like Lulu for a pullback buy, pullback buy. Looking for a stair step or looking for first five minute oversold for a potential back burner trade, MMM. And here's another one I struggled with. I'm like, ah, don't put it on there. Put it on there. Don't put it on there. Something's going on with MMM. I don't know what it is. I know they had some type of event yesterday. But we have double daily inside bars. And we have had a ton, a ton of options activity. And it's been a mixed bag. And it's so odd for MMM to see these big hundred, multiple hundred thousand, several hundred thousand dollar trades. It's very unusual. I don't know what's going on with it. And we have lost weekly support on huge bear volume. So I would be careful with a break. I think a bear break could, excuse me, a bull break could be for shorting in this downtrend looking for a potential bear flag. So we have this tightening range. If you like tightening ranges, this one is for you. And if we're going to position ourselves in a tightening range, typically we look for the preceding trend to position ourselves within a tightening range. And we look at the preceding trend and position ourselves accordingly, in this case, to the downside. So MMM, we're bouncing on the four hour. We're still oversold on the daily. Again, this is going to be a tough one. I don't even know why I put it on here. Sorry. Ulta. Ulta and Lulu like to run together. These two are, I mean, women love Ulta and Lulu. That's why. But they like to run together. Daily chart is super healthy. Look at this. We're above the eight EMA. It doesn't look like all those tech rec charts. I would look for a potential pullback buy today in Ulta. Again, it likes to run with Lulu, so a pullback buy makes sense on Ulta. Plenty of room for hourly high or low. Okay, thank you, DWZ. Thank you, Melissa. Look at all these smart people. So smart. Paul, I see it through black box stocks. All right, you know, uh, Boogeyman, I had MSOS on my list I probably marked it up. Yeah, I even marked it up. I was going to look for a pullback buy, looking for that daily higher low. I think MSOS wicked out at that uh, daily 
21 EMA looks super healthy. A lower high is anticipated on a bounce, however. The bulls gave back too much. But I think a pullback buy makes sense, and it was awesome yesterday in the room. I Awesome that it worked out. It doesn't always work out, but when it does, it's so much fun. I posted in the room this uh, falling wedge in our marijuana channel. Something like that. And I posted 1240 support, which we talked about yesterday. That 1240 support right there. We got within three cents of it at a falling wedge. That's evidence. So let's talk about the evidence on this one. I know y'all want me to look at some other names, but I'm going to use this as a teaching opportunity. Um, we were looking for a daily high or low. We were looking, we had a 10 minute falling wedge. Approaching support of 1240 and market was bouncing boom 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 those are great long high conviction entries for me because i have a pattern a bullish pattern approaching support larger time frame scouting a higher low it's it's just a perfect confluence is the word yeah hit the like button please all right i'm gonna wrap it up I'm sorry I did not get to your chart request. If you're in TCG and you still need a chart from me, you can uh, post it in the chat room and I will do the technical analysis for you. And I believe, who's going live right now? Jason? Yeah, Jason, and he'll cover it as well live once he posts the ticker request thread. So thank y'all for joining me. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. TCGers, you'll see a lot of me today in the room. And you pre-gamers that are not TCGers, why not? And I'm going to go copy and paste my notes right now, and I will post it in our chat room. Y'all have a good day. You stop losses.